Welcome to my channel and if you like what you see, please like this video and hit subscribe. All right, let's get started. First, what are macros? Macros are short for macronutrients and the three macronutrients are protein, carbs, and fat. These three macronutrients, let's call them macros, are all in the foods that you eat, the foods that and drinks that you consume. Some foods have all three macros and others have one or two. And macros make up the caloric content of the food. So macros are calories. If you're counting macros, you're counting calories. So let me show you how this works. Let's look at this nutrition label. If you look closely, you'll see that there is protein, carbs, and fat. All three are present in this food item. This is also true for whole foods like veggies and fruit. They don't carry a nutrition label. However, you'll see macros in those foods as well. As you can see, they make up the caloric content of this food. So let's start with the first macronutrient, presenting protein. When you think of protein, most people think of chicken, steak, seafood. And yes, that is protein, but there are other foods out there that contain great sources of protein that aren't primarily meat. I'm looking at you vegetarians. Some examples are eggs, nuts, seeds, beans, cheese. These are really great sources of protein as well. Protein is essential to building and maintaining muscle. It also will keep you full and satiated and it has the highest thermic effect of food. What does that mean? Basically means you burn more calories eating protein because it takes more energy to digest and process the protein in your body. Now let's move on to one of the loves of my life, carbohydrates. And carbohydrates are probably one of the most misunderstood macros out there. Carbs are usually the first to go when we think of a diet. Our carbs are actually very necessary in providing fuel for our workouts, providing energy, and it is our body's preferred energy source. Okay, and the final macro is fat. This is also a misunderstood macronutrient. But with the boom of avocados in the 2000s, we finally learned to love the good fat. Fat is an essential building block for overall health and for our hormones to function. Not getting enough fat can wreak havoc on our hormones and our bodies will not react well to that. So let's go back to that nutrition label. How do the macros equal calories? Let's get to calculating. Okay, now you might wanna take some notes here. So a gram of protein equals four calories. One gram of carbohydrates equals four calories as well. But when it comes to fat, one gram of fat equals nine calories. So those calories actually add up a little bit more quickly. So these three macros will equal the calories of this food item. Let's calculate this together. Okay, so let's look at this nutrition label. This is cottage cheese. This has 100 calories per serving. So let's see if the macros add up. Now, let's look at the fat. There are two and a half grams of fat in this cottage cheese. Now let's multiply that by nine calories and that will give you 22.5. Now, let's look at the carbs. There are seven carbs, seven grams of carbs in this cottage cheese times four calories and that will give you 28 calories. Now, let's look at the final macro, which is protein. There's 13 grams of protein in this cottage cheese. Now multiply that by four and you get 52. Now, once you add up all three, you'll see this will equal 102 and a half calories. We can round up to 103. Now, why doesn't the nutrition label equal the same as the macros that we've calculated? Well, FYI, the FDA allows brands to round up or round down when putting the calories on the label. So you can see where this is one of the reasons we like to track macros rather than calories. Okay, so now that we've determined what the macros are, protein, carbs, and fat, and that they make up the caloric content of our food, so does tracking macros actually help you lose weight? Well, sort of. If you know the amount of calories you need to lose weight, then we can calculate your macros through a quick formula. Now, you can use the calculator that's listed in the description to help you figure out what your calories might be in order to lose weight. Or if you want more details on how to calculate your own macros, check out this video. So now you know how many calories you need to lose weight. So let's just say it's 1800 calories. Sure, you could just track calories. You can eat whatever you want that equals 1800 calories. 
For instance, you could eat one large pizza that equals 1800 calories and be within that calorie deficit to make sure you lose weight but you probably wouldn't feel your best after eating an entire pizza. So that's where macros come into play. We know that protein is important in keeping you full, building and maintaining muscle. Carbs are great as a fuel energy source and fats are going to make sure that your hormones stay in check. So by tracking your macros, you have a more balanced approach that will help you lose fat. This will give you the best chance of losing fat and maintaining or building muscle. And losing weight or losing fat isn't the best part of using macros. By having the right percentage of macros, you also can achieve better biofeedback levels like energy, hunger, digestion, stress, and sleep you will feel better because you have a more balanced nutrition approach. And guess what? You can still have pizza, but having macro goals will ensure that you're getting more nutrients into your day and have a more balanced approach to losing fat, but also being able to sustain that long term. I hope this video helped you figure out what macros are and how important it can be to helping you in your fat loss journey. If this information helped you, please click the like button or subscribe and you can be notified when our next video comes out.